Welcome back everyone. Let's resume this chapter of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Now, in previous topics we have discussed about pre-fertilization events that is microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis. I hope you are clear that these two events are part of gametogenesis. Okay, when we talk about gametogenesis, here you know that in these two events male and female gametes were formed. Now after gametogenesis another event comes that is it is followed by gamete transfer. When we talk about angiospermic plants this process of gamete transfer is done by an, a mechanism that is pollination. Okay now let's recall about pollination first. You know that it is a process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of a flower. Now here you can see in a picture it is clearly visible that in anther pollen grains are present which are transferred with the help of pollinating agent on the stigma of flower. So pollinating agent uh, may be required or they may not be required in this process okay so on the basis of different types of plants and depending on the source of pollen there are different kinds of pollination let's discuss about this now pollination can be categorized into two broad categories first one is self pollination and second one is cross pollination when we talk about self pollination then again it is categorized into two different categories autogamy and genogamy now question arises why is it so now first of all let's know about autogamy okay now when transfer of pollen grains takes place from anther to the stigma of the same flower then it is known as autogamy just imagine there is a flower where anther as well as pistil is already present okay now when pollen grains are transferred from the anther of the same flower to the stigma of the same flower then it is known as autogamy now for this one condition is required that is the maturation and release of pollen must be at the same time as well as stigma receptivity must be at the same time that means these two events must be synchronized it it must take place at the same time so this uh, condition is a must for autogamy now let's move on to the next type of uh, self pollination that that is geitonogamy when we talk about geitonogamy uh, it is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of same plant now just imagine there is one plant having four to five flowers so pollen grains are transferred from from one flower to another flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant this process is known as geitonogamy yes it looks like cross pollination but it is self pollination because pollinating agents are required but genetically pollen grains belongs to the same plant okay so it is self pollination now moving on to cross pollination when we talk about cross pollination it is quite easy to remember cross pollination another term used for it is xenogamy so xenogamy starts with x cross so you can remember it by this uh, that uh, this is also known as xenogamy is also known as cross pollination now transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different plant is known as xenogamy and here pollinating agents are required as well as genetically pollen grains are from different plants so they are genetically different okay this is the basic difference now although 
जीटोनोगैमी एज वेल एज जेनोगैमी बोथ आर नोन एज क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन बट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू ओके नाउ लेट्स रिकॉल इट वंस अगेन जीटोनोगैमी इज द ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स फ्रॉम द एंथर टू द स्टिग्मा ऑफ अनदर फ्लावर ऑफ सेम प्लांट वेर एज इन जेनोगैमी द डिफरेंस इज दैट दिस ट्रांसफर इज of different plants okay it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different plants second most important difference is the pollen grains are genetically similar to the plant in the case of jitonogamy whereas in zenogamy pollen grains are genetically different from the plant so this is the basic difference here you can see a picture is shown this picture is showing cross pollination here pollinating agent is clearly visible it is a bee and pollen grains and uh, dust on the body surface of the bee when it reaches to another flower these dusted uh, these pollen grains gets dusted on the stigma so in this way cross pollination takes place with the help of pollinating agent so this is a small picture which is depicting cross pollination so there is another feature of autogamy that in some flowers or you can say in some plants there are two types of flowers are produced chasmogamous flower and cleistogamous flower now always remember that chasmogamous flowers are open flowers and cleistogamous flowers are closed flowers so when we talk about these flowers you will see that chasmogamous flowers are open at maturity and their stigma and stamens are always exposed when we talk about cleistogamous flower they are closed flowers and they are bisexual and they never opens okay now if chasmogamous flowers are open there are chances that they will be pollinated either through cross pollination or through self pollination but in cleistogamous flowers because they are closed they are self pollinated only okay now uh, there are few examples which you should remember about such plants first one is common pansy uh, oxalis and commelina so common pansy is also known as voila plant and there is another plant shown that is commelina here you can see chasmogamous flower and this one is cleistogamous flower or closed flower okay in voila plant you have it is clearly shown that this one is chasmogamous flower this one is cleistogamous flower now Uh, in cleistogamous flower it is usually said that cleistogamous flowers produces produces a short seed set here you can see after fertilization fruit is there having seeds okay they produces a short seed set even in the absence of pollinator so many times this question uh, is asked in exam that cleistogamous flowers produces a short seed set even in the absence of pollinators justify the statement so you have to uh, write it is very clear it is very clear that because cleistogamous flowers are closed they are bisexual so there are uh, there are 100% chances that self pollination will only takes place therefore there is assured there is formage there is uh, it ensures that a seed set will form even in the absence of pollinators okay whereas in chasmogamous flower uh, cross pollination also takes place so even uh, if the in the absence of pollinators there are there are no chance or there are very less chance of formation of a short seed set okay so while going through your ncert you must remember that such type of questions are often asked okay so let's move on now let's discuss about agents of pollination when we talk about agents of pollination those agents which help in pollination they will be either living 
or non living they are known as agents of pollination okay so we can now categorize them into two categories abiotic agents and biotic agents all non living agents comes under abiotic agents group whereas living agents comes under biotic agents a means non living a means absent biotic means living so it means non living agent so example of non living agent is wind and water when we talk about living agents there are number of living agents which helps in pollination they are insects bats snails birds humans etc and uh, particular terms are given to them okay now if pollination takes place by insect it is known as entomophily if by bats chiropetrophily if by snails melocophily and if by birds ornithophily so these are uh these are the terms given to such agents okay now moving on now when we talk about agents of pollination uh those plants where different agents play important role in pollination they possess specific characteristics okay now first of all we are going to take up wind pollination those plants which have which are specialized for wind pollination they possess certain specific characteristics number 1 they are not colorful number 2 they do not possess nectar number 3 they produce large amount of pollen grains i hope you can uh, understand why they produce large amount of pollen grains you know that pollen grains are transported through wind currents so there are chances there are little chances that some pollen grains will reach but others will get wasted so to increase this chance that they reach up to ovule large amount of pollen grains are produced okay or you can say to compensate the loss of pollen grains and to maximize the chance that they reach up to ovule large number of pollen grains are produced okay next characteristic is most of the pollen grains are light and non sticky as they will be carried by wind current okay next characteristic is they have got well exposed stamens that means their stamens are well exposed so that they it can help in easy dispersal of wind current next is they must have feathery stigma now here feathery stigma simply means that the stigma must be able to trap more and more air borne pollen grains so they possess feathery stigma then again most of these uh, plants have got single ovule also and sometimes if flowers are present they are present in inflorescence okay now here now you can see a picture of a pinus tree where you can see some dust coming out this dust is nothing but po these are pollen grains which are uh, uh, which are uh, which comes out from these plants during pollination period and um, they are also known as sulfur dust because they appear a uh, yellowish in color and then again there is another example of uh, z maize or you can say maize okay uh, here you can see that tassels are present in it always remembers these uh, tassels are important to trap pollen grains okay and it is found that the type of wind pollination is very very common in grasses okay so always learn characteristics of wind pollinated plants which is important to understand that how they help in pollination now moving on to water pollination this is very interesting it is also known as hydrophily wind pollination is also known as anemophily and it is known as hydrophily now uh, it is observed that very less aquatic plants uses water as a pollinating agent other aquatic plants uses either insect pollination or wind pollination so uh, there is a limited amount of around 30 genera which are monocots 
they only use water as a pollinating agent okay so just remember 30 genera mostly monocotyledons use this water pollination for transfer of gametes okay uh, today i'm going to discuss only about valisneria and zostera to understand it better uh, because in both of them water pollination takes place but the mechanism is little different okay so first one is valisneria valisneria is a plant which is mostly found in fresh water and uh, in valisneria the female flower has got long stalk with which reaches up to the surface of water here you can see in this picture that this picture is showing valisneria plant where you can see a female flower that is that reaches up to the long uh, or, or you can say the surface of water and this is the long stalk okay here you can see that male flower is released and it it is carried passively by the surface or by the water current through the surface and it finally reaches up to the female flower and helps in fertilization so this type of pollination takes place in valisneria but when we talk about uh, zostera zostera is a sea grass so it is obviously found in marine water here these flowers these plants are submerged in water and pollen grains are not released on the surface but they are released inside water so inside the water pollen grains are released and they reaches uh, up to the female flower through uh, water current only okay now the pollen grains possesses specific characteristics that is they are long they are ribbon like they are carried passively by water and most of them have got pollen grains which contains a mucilaginous covering around them this mucilaginous covering protects them from wetting and desiccation okay again water pollinated plants are not colorful and do, they do not produce nectar so these are basic characteristics possessed by possessed by water pollinated plants i hope i've made it clear now let's move on to those plants which are pollinated by insects now when we talk about insect pollinated plants you will find that their characteristic is very uh, it is very easy to understand the characteristic they possesses like they are very large they are colorful they are fragrant they are rich in nectar okay and uh, there are some flowers uh, which are pollinated by flies and beetles it is observed that they produces foul odors so that they can attract these animals okay now uh, you will see that these flowers mostly provide nectar and pollen grains to the insects always remember that flowers also attract insect towards them and they can interact they can attract only by providing uh, some rewards and these rewards given by flowers are known as floral rewards so there are two basic rewards nectar and pollen grains and there is one more floral reward it is it is uh, by providing safe places to lay eggs so some flowers also provide safe places to lay their eggs so this is also a type of floral rewards okay now let's take some example there is a, a tallest known flower which is known as amorphophallus it is it is believed that it is observed that it also provide safe place to lay eggs and in in return insects pollinate them okay now if you will see another example of yucca flower this is yucca flower and on this you can see moth here you can clearly see moth and this is a yucca flower this is a moth and this is a this white flower is yucca flower here this yucca flower provides safe place for depositing or for laying its eggs in the locule of ovary or in the space of ovary and 
in return flower gets pollinated by this moth so it is observed that this yucca plant and moth cannot complete its life cycle without each other and this phenomena is also known as coevolution if one gets extinct another one will also get extinct so both need each other for completing life cycle and for survival here you can see that for uh, pollination moth is required by a flower okay so this is another important example i hope it is clear now moving on to the next important part now you can see you can clearly think about those characteristics which help in differentiating insect pollinated plants as well as wind pollinated plants just think about it and then see this difference okay so that you can understand how you have how much you have understood it well now moving on to certain devices which are known as outbreeding devices now see there are some plants which if they will continue self pollination for a long period of time they will face or they face a problem of inbreeding depression now question arises what is this inbreeding depression inbreeding depression means when organisms loses its vigor and productivity growth then it is known as inbreeding depression it is mostly found in it is mostly found in those conditions where self pollination continues therefore plants have made their mechanisms to stop self pollination and encourage cross pollination so those devices which prevent self pollination but encourages cross pollination are known as outbreeding devices okay now what are these devices now in some flowers it is observed that the st stigma or you can say stamen as well as the pistil are of different sizes so that pollen grains are not pollen grains are not deposited on the same stigma in some plants it is observed that there is a anatomical barrier between anther and stigma okay like allotropis procera is the example which prevents self pollination in some plants pollens do not germinate on their own flower if due to some mistake due to some other reason if their own pollen grains gets deposited on stigma of their own flower they will not germinate it is called self sterility there is another mechanism it is maturation of anther and stigma receptivity is not synchronized in many flowers i told you earlier that if autogamy has to happen then anther maturation and stigma receptivity must be synchronized it must take place at the same time therefore pollen release and stigma receptivity if it takes place at the same time self pollination is possible but there are plants where anther matures before pistil and this condition is known as protandry and there are there are some plants where pistil matures before anther it is called as protogyny so such condition takes place where it prevents self pollination but encourages cross pollination okay now there is another mechanism it is known as self incompatibility it is a genetic mechanism which prevents self pollen from fertilizing its own ovules by inhibiting pollen germination okay so self incompatibility also helps in preventing self pollination so these are certain mechanisms which prevents autogamy as well as zygotogamy but it encourages xenogamy that is cross pollination okay now next one is now moving on when uh, all these activities complete that is pollination is completed by pollen pollinating agent and gamete transfer is over now another process has to start that is pollen germination on the stigma but this 
is a very important event so it depends upon various factors what are these let's know about it now when pollination gets over and when pollen gets deposited on the stigma it is very important to know whether it is a right type of pollen or it is a wrong type of a pollen for that flower now what do you mean by right type or wrong type right type means if if some uh, wrong species pollen have settled on the stigma then it will not it will not um, germinate on it like mangoes pollen will uh, if fall on the stigma of marigolds pollen uh, stigma then obviously it will not germinate it is a wrong type of pollen and if sometimes if pollen is self incompatible that means if um, in its own flower pollen grain settles pollen grains deposits on its own stigma it is self incompatible so it is again wrong type but what if it is right type if right type of or compatible pollens settle on the stigma it helps in germination so before germination pistil recognizes the pollen and accepts it that means it is a compatible pollen and then the pollen germination starts but if acceptance is not there and rejection takes place then pollen germination will not take place okay so this is a very important condition that pistil recognizes pollen whether it is compatible or it is incompatible pollen if it is compatible then it will start germination now moving on how it germinates we have discussed earlier that when pollen grains are released in its mature state it is either two celled condition or it is three celled state condition i hope you remember two celled condition means having vegetative cell and generative cell so one vegetative one generative two celled condition in some plants Uh, pollen grains are also shed at three celled condition so three celled condition here means one vegetative cell and two milgametes it becomes three okay so this is three celled condition we have also discussed when pollen germination starts pollen tube is formed pollen tube is formed from a part of pollen grain just remember that part that pollen grain is made up of exine hard exine and intine exine contains small interrupted places known as germ pores from these germ pores pollen tube forms okay and this pollen tube contains two male gametes okay now these pollen some um, chemical changes takes place inside the pistil and when it takes place it helps in the formation of or you can say it helps in penetration of the style tissue so that pollen tube can reach up to the micropyle okay now uh, this picture here clearly shows what do you mean by incompatible or compatible pollens uh, here you can see that this is the diagram where you can see stigma style and this is the ovary okay now you can see s1 and s2 genes are present but here in pollen grains these are s3 and s4 that means they do not belong to the same genes so they are growing here you can see pollen tube formation takes place in s3 as well as s4 in another condition you can see the genes are same that is s1 and this one is also s1 so this pollen grain is incompatible whereas s3 is compatible here in this case you can see that s1 and s2 genes are already present and here in pollen grains also s1 and s2 genes are present that that means again they they uh, might belong to same flower also so they are also not germinating
so they are also incompatible so these are incompatible whereas these are compatible ones okay so this is clearly depicting the germination of pollen grains okay uh, now uh, there is one more condition that when pollen tube germination starts when pollen tube germination starts pollen tube can enter through micropyle and when pollen tube directly enters through micropyle here then this is known as porogamy okay p o r o g a m y porogamy whereas when pollen grain enters through this part chalaza then it is known as chalazo gamy it is known as chalazo gamy but when pollen grains enters through nucellus it is known as meso gamy so there are three conditions when pollen tube enters through micropyle porogamy chalaza chalazo gamy and through integuments or other parts meso gamy so uh, on the basis of entry of pollen tube we can divide them into three different categories now we have discussed earlier that synergids also contains filiform apparatus and the work of filiform apparatus is to guide this pollen tube and male gametes up to embryo sac so it completes it now always remember there is a term pollen pistil interaction what is this how will you define it all these events which takes place or you can say which starts from pollen deposition on stigma until pollen tubes reaches the ovule are collectively referred as pollen pistil interaction okay so all these events starting from the pollen deposition till pollen tube enters the ovule are termed as a collectively termed as pollen pistil interaction i hope it is clear now when we talk about pollens it is very important to understand that in cross breeding or you can say in plant breeding ex experiments breeders are using various types of characteristics to produce hybrid plants now they are using a technique which is called as artificial hybridization where you you know that hybridization simply means combining characteristics of two different plants and putting it in one plant and that plant is called as hybrid so we can sum it up as it is a technique in plant breeding where crosses are made between different varieties species and even genera to combine their desirable characters in a single superior variety and it is known as artificial hybridization okay now for combining characteristics we need to use two different processes first one is known as emasculation and second one is known as bagging bagging is followed by tagging now first of all what is emasculation see if we are using a bisexual flower if we are using a bisexual flower we know that bisexual flower contains stamen contains stamen as well as it also contains pistil so we we don't want its own pistil we don't want its own pollen grains to get dusted on its own pistil so we will remove these stamens carefully with the help of forcep and this process is known as emasculation okay and um, i emasculation is it i hope it is clear that uh, if there is a female parent flower and it is a bisexual flower we have to remove anthers from the flower bud before maturation of anther by using pair of forceps so these are forceps okay and this step is known as emasculation and just after that emasculated flowers are covered by using a 
butter paper bag so that uh, these any other pollen grains do not contaminate the stigma of the flower okay so emasculated flowers are usually covered with butter paper you have to remember this to prevent contamination of its stigma with any type of unwanted pollens and this technique is known as bagging okay so when stigma of bagged flower attains receptivity or you can say that the stigma of bagged flower becomes mature pollen grains from another flower are taken by using a brush and they are taken from that pollen grains are taken from that plant and very gently dusted over the stigma of that flower and then again that flower is covered with a bag okay and it is left so that fertilization can take place and fruits are formed later on and seeds are then used just remember one thing that if it is a unisexual flower there is no need for emasculation emasculation is done only in bisexual flowers okay and if it is a unisexual uh, unisexual flower just female flowers are bagged when it is covered with a bag before opening up of the flowers okay and uh, in that case when stigma becomes mature or receptive later on bag is removed and pollen grains from a selected parent plant taken and dusted over that stigma and flower is again bagged to prevent it from contamination of unwanted pollen so these are the steps which are followed i have also mentioned another last step that is tagging the tagging means these flowers are tagged with time and date when these processes are carried out to keep a record of it okay and artificial hybridization is mostly done to help in crop improvement programs where desired pollen grains are used for pollination and stigma is protected from contamination okay so artificial hybridization is nothing it is a method used by plant breeders to get a desired or superior varieties of plants i hope it is clear and uh, you will understand it better now that these are some take away questions if you have understood all these concepts try to use try to answer these uh, questions so that you can understand or you can check your understanding level okay thank you and try to recall all the things which you have read in it so that you can understand the concept well thank you